Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna do a tour of my cutting garden, which is now being transitioned into a vegetable garden. There's okay, let's go ahead and start with the hummingbird garden. Can you believe <laughs> how crazy full it is? I mean, there was nothing in here just a couple months ago. I may have told you this already, but I planted this prairie drop seed in between the um, Carex amphibola because the um, Carex amphibola just can't deal with the amount of sun that's right here and not like if there was a lot more moisture it might be able to deal with it but um, I'm just going to swap it out. So right here I have irises and agastache, nodding onions are in bloom. Down there, my Philadelphia fleabane is past its time. And then here are two of my Eastern prickly pears that I grew from seed. Here's more of this prairie drop seed that I'm hoping to take the place of the Carex amphibola. And then here is a really cool um, plant. It is the native petunia. This all sees everywhere. This is not the plant for you, but I love it. And then here I have different types of salvias. This is pineapple sage and great blue lobelia is just starting to bloom. There's more agastache and nodding onion. You'll see a repetition here. Back against the fence line, I have some zinnias. And I think next year I won't be doing the pink in here. I'm gonna be doing like the Benary's Giant Red just because I think it looks, that color looks so much better with the purple of the salvias and the um, Black Eyed Susans. Or the, it's the Rudbeckia Fulgida, I think. Oh, I don't remember. Anyway, down there is a little lamb's ear. It's getting a little unruly, but I cut back the, the blooms. The blooms are pretty, but just kind of doesn't do what I want it to do. There's some more salvias. I just love how the salvias, the dark purple salvias are looking with the Rudbeckia. Oh, this is a good one. I was talking to my bestie about this the other day. This right here, I did not plant this Rudbeckia. And look at it, it has like weird petals. Does anybody know what this is? Did a bird drop this in here, drop seed in here? Or is this just a special hybrid in my yard? Anyway, it's really cool. More nodding onion. Here's like one of my favorite views right now in the garden. Here is one of my favorite views right now in the garden with the purple and the yellow, which are complementary colors on the color wheel. And something actually I've been really loving too is this dark red Benary's Giant with the steeple bush and the great blue lobelias and the, the yellow. And it, there's something about these zinnias and this look right here with the zinnias dying back that I just love, like the, even the dying back part. Anyway, so I'm gonna do a lot more of those Benary's giant dark red uh, zinnias in the back next year. If you guys could see all the pollinators on these flowers, oh my goodness. You know what, let me see. I was trying to take a video of this the other day, but the robber bees are, oh, here's one, all over my salvias. You see that guy? He's robbing the pollen or nectar or whatever from the blooms of the salvia instead of going inside to get the nectar like the hummingbirds do. Look at all these pollinators. Oop. Okay. Anyway, that's enough of the hummingbird garden. I absolutely love it. Oh, let me show you something.
the cutting garden. The Hypericum prolificums are losing their blooms. They still have a little bit left. The other day I spent all morning remulching this so it would look pretty for the video. So here is walking into the garden. I'll start over here. This is just a bunch of holy basils, which the bumblebees love. And then we have bush beans that aren't doing so well. I don't know, maybe they don't like the, the grow bags or I'm not growing them right. I don't know, I have to look into it. And then this is, what is this one? Oh, this is a Jack the Little Pumpkin. And then we have some more bush beans that are doing well and then a honey nut squash with these really just fantastic blooms more bush beans and then holy basil that matches the other side now i'll go over i'll start on the far left so over here this is my dahlia row And we have this guy blooming. Let me see what the name is. Dad's favorite. And it looks like this is purple Taiho. Looks like there's some Japanese beetles I need to get off. I th think that my Peggy Jean isn't the healthiest. I may get rid of that one. But I do have a yellow bird blooming, which I love yellow bird. I'm gonna change my Dahlia strategy next year more on that later and then this one is I think that one's poodle skirt I'll double check when I get back over there and here in front of the first the left side a four by eight bed this is Peruvian zinnia and I have that intermixed with partridge pea partridge pea is the native I am letting this go to seed a couple of these go to seed I'm going to clear them out here probably today or tomorrow because I'm going to put my black soybean plants in here but I do want to save the seed of some of these Peruvian zinnias right here I have huge um, Isabella Isabellina zinnias they're really great and then behind that is let's see this is a bronze fennel which is blooming and then one of my favorite zinnias, I should probably tag that one to keep the seed, is this Mighty Lion. So pretty. This spot right here, this spot right here, I'm going to take a picture of just a little bit later. Let me see if I can frame it up here. Yeah, because I just think that it looks so gorgeous. Heading through the trellises, I have my pole runner beans here. I have different varieties. I forgot to label them but they have been producing like crazy we have been eating bean after bean after bean and my family loves beans so <laughs> these green beans anyway so that has been just such a pleasure i did try dilly beans i can't remember if i made a video on that or not i didn't like those maybe i did it wrong we'll see okay over here are some melon plants which i think are just it's just they're just not going to get big enough in time and the reason why they're so small is because i probably should have planted those against the fence or somewhere where they would have gotten more sun i planted them too late and the beans kind of took over here's a look in here at that mighty lion zinnia again just love that guy and then there's some dahlias in there they are starting to get some blooms like this one but I have great blue lobelia and then we have um, bone set and then a New England aster and these are all mixed in with basils and some dahlias that I got late so they haven't started blooming yet there are still some cosmos in or here around here but nothing to write home about Okay, moving over to the back beds. Here I have Boston pickling cucumbers, and then I have more salt and pepper cucumbers, which I told you I didn't like, but I, I, that's not correct. I didn't like them. And then I have acorn squash right here, climbing up. 
And then back in the back, I have silver slicer and then wild garlic. In this bed, we have turtle head and there is a dahlia. And here are marigolds. a pretty salvia that a gardening friend gave me. I put in some red swan bush beans in here and I also have some dwarf uh, beans as well. There's another dahlia. All the dahlias in the raised beds were planted really late because I got them late. And then as far as my trees go in front here, here are my ch two chestnut oaks. And then I have a persimmon, uh, American holly. This is a Carolina allspice. And then I have another, this is a Carolina allspice or persimmon. Mm, I don't know. Anyway, something looks wrong with the leaves, obviously. Okay, so moving on to the orange bed. I have all sorts of um, classic zinnias and uh, tangerine marigolds, giant marigolds, dahlias, an enormous <laughs> Mexican sunflower. All looking pretty good. Now I'm going to start pulling a lot of this stuff to make room for my fall vegetables, which is a little sad, but we'll see. And then my trees over here, these are all my red mulberries, so the native red mulberries. All my trees are native that I have here in this row. And then here, if you follow me on Instagram or uh, Facebook, here is my Rebecca triloba. I'm going to move these plants behind my um, button bush for next year. That's in the corner pollinator garden, native plant garden. And then down here, I just have a bunch of holy basil. I just love walking around in this garden and brushing up against the holy basil because it just smells so unbelievable. Partridge peas are everywhere. And then down here, I have a gourd. This is the one that makes the birdhouses. I think I have some sort of spot there. If somebody knows what that is, I'm not sure if that's capturing it, let me know. <clears throat> I think I should treat it with hydrogen peroxide, but we'll see. And then here I have, oh goodness, what is this one? Oh, one is a butternut squash and then one is a spaghetti squash. Okay, so that is spaghetti squash. That is butternut squash. If I turn around here, these are all my pots with the um, Jerusalem artichokes in them and then the scarlet runner beans running up them. I'm not sure that those scarlet runner beans have done such a great job this year. Well, not this year. It's the first year I've tried it. Okay, and then the front of my right side 4 by 8 bed, the front is covered in partridge peas. There's the bumblebees just loving on it. And then I have my patch of pink zinnias. This is exquisite and illumination. They're really pretty. And here I have a self-seated native, here let me try, bellflower, campanella, campanella americana. Anyway, I'll grab the seeds off of those. And I have another place I want to put the bellflowers. Here's a melon that's doing a little bit better. It's a little bit older. Maybe I can get something out of that by the end of the season. And then looking at this bed in this direction, I have a bunch of dahlias. Again, those are late. And then cosmos. A super tall cosmos up there. And back to the illumination and exquisite zinnias. So again, all these flower beds will be vegetable beds next year. There's a silver slicer cucumber. I've been eating a lot of those. They've been really good. And then down this alley was my tomato project. So I have cucumber. This is like a standard cucumber. 
burpless hybrid, my three determinant tomatoes. This is my straight eight cucumber and then my three kind of standard indeterminate tomatoes. So again, that was a project I just did because I moved all my heirlooms out of here and I planted these in the ground. Oh, I forgot to mention back here, cleared this out of my natives and put those somewhere else. And I think against this row here or this fence here, I'm going to do beans. I just sewed up and started a bunch of beans. So I think I'm going to put them along the fence line here. Here's another look at the cutting garden from this angle. And then over here with the hummingbird and cutting garden, there's so much greenery in there. I'm just loving it right now. Okay, so here's my hot mess express. I took out a lot of those basil plants because they just weren't doing well there. And um, I put some dill. I got some dill from Walmart. I really am loving dill and I'm using it for the pickles and stuff like that. The artichokes that the ants just killed, <laughs> they're starting to come back. I might plant them in the ground and see how they do. But anyway, my cucumbers over here, I think they're starting to peter out. I have these silver slicers, which I love. It's more Rudbeckia. Joe Pie weed. And then the salt and pepper ones. I think I'm going to try and put soybeans in there next. Oh, here are the soybeans. Here are the two that I showed you in the video that I said I needed to get in. So there, that's where I put them. There were cucumbers here. And then here is a new cucumber. Oh, I can't remember, but it's a bush cucumber and it's a more compact cucumber. And there are all my natives that need to be planted out. Oh my goodness, all of them everywhere. I can't help myself but to plant seed. I just can't. Oh, and it looks like some of them are gonna need to be fed. Hmm. Well, that'll be interesting. Anyway, I've gone through all these before, but we have mountain mint and sneezeweed and aromatic aster and shorts aster. We have rudbeckias, rudbeckia triloba, hypericum prolificum, a bunch of different grasses. Over here I have anise hyssop, orange corn, <laughs> orange cone flower. This is giant hyssop, coreopsis, landsleaf coreopsis, a grass. This one is hoary mountain mint. Look at those leaves. Okay, anyway, purple cone flower. That's a yucca. Yeah. So, some oregano or marjoram, and carrots and stuff. Anyway, that's my corner of shame. There it is. It looks horrible. I gotta get that cleaned up. Back behind the beds, I have Joe Pie weed. And oh, Joe Pie weed looks so good. I kept it cut back. Now, I'm not sure if it's just because they're only a couple years old, but that Chelsea chop really kept them a little bit low, I think. So it's Joe Pie weed interplanted with little blue stem and are planted with Carex blanda. Oh, and there's a volunteer red bud. And so I also have the native black raspberry in here. Well, it's actually not native to the Piedmont. It's native to the mountains of Virginia. And I, I got some cuttings from my parents. Okay, so here we are. I'm gonna design this area all out, um, I think pretty soon here and get, get things coordinated a little bit better. But anyway, 
things are growing. Looks like I have some grass that found its way into my Carex Amphibola, so I'm going to have to get in there and try and pull out the actual grasses versus the Carex Blanda. I've had to do it elsewhere. It's been a little difficult, but that's okay. Back to the Joe Pye weed and the Black Eyed Susans. Okay guys, that is it for today. Thank you so much for taking your time with me to take a look at my cutting garden. Please consider subscribing, sharing with your gardening friends, pressing the bell if you wanna know when I do another video. But anyway, thanks again. I know your time is valuable and I appreciate you sharing it with me.